صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه Amandla Johnson. Amandla is from Cage UK. He is the communications officer. He's been dealing with all aspects of media regarding to Cage. He has also worked at Islam Channel and, is, uh, and The Guardian. And in addition, he works for various publishing houses. So I'm going to call him in. He's come all the way from the UK to share some background into Cage. Jazakallah. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for the very, uh, uh, very nice introduction. Um, I'm, I'm very humbled to be here today um, with you all. Um, not just my first time in not just South Africa, but the African continent um, as well. So this is my first time on the African continent. Um, and for someone who comes from an African diaspora community, uh, my parents are from the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago, to be precise. Um, it's quite um, you know, enchanting to be here. Um, so, a little bit about CAGE. CAGE was founded around 10 years ago um, in response to the fact that many families um, in a part of London realised their sons, their loved ones, had been taken away um, to a hideous place um, in the Caribbean, not on a beach or somewhere nice, but in the prison cells of Guantanamo on Cuba. CAGE went to those families and drew up a list of names um, of the individuals that were taken there. And this became the first authoritative list um, of people who were held um, at, at what we later no, knew as Guantanamo Bay. Um, this was about 300 people they were able to identify. Now we have to realize at this time, back in 2003, 2004, um, most of us had no doubt that these people were guilty terrorists. Um, the, the narrative at that time was that these people had been in Afghanistan, they were a part of Al-Qaeda, you know, they had done wrong and they should be locked up. But look, but look where we are now. You know, look where we are now. Look how the narrative has changed completely. This is why imp the importance of organizations like CAGE is really paramount. Because by raising awareness and showing you know, the facts on the ground of these people, we've been able to show that these people have never been charged, for example. Sorry, I gave away the answer to the question that I was put to you before. <laughs> we've also been able to see that many of these people were pick picked up um, by mistake. They were tortured, they, they were abused. Mouazen Beg, who is a spokesperson for CAGE, um, who is now incarcerated in, in, in the UK as well. I mean, this, these people are the most interrogated people on the face of the earth. Maybe they've been interrogated hundreds of times. I, I'll leave it to our guests next um, to explain a bit more. But by raising awareness of these issues, we also raised awareness of the nature of America, of Britain, of countries who time and time again lecture us condescendingly about their values and about what they can bring to the world. Democracy, freedom, liberty, all of these things. And what we actually revealed was that these countries have been part and parcel of a global, a global web of abuse. And unfortunately, this web of abuse has taken in some countries on the African continent as well, which is obviously one of the reasons why we have set up, whether it be in Kenya, whether it be in Ethiopia, or whether it be in Mali as well. African countries, unfortunately, um, are also complicit in this. To give you some more information, CAGE was the first organization, actually, to discover around 100 black sites um, across the world um, in places such as Poland, as far away as Thailand, and also in Africa as well. We're also the first organization to shine a light on British complicity in torture, so British Secret Services helping other countries, America especially, in the torture, rendition, the kidnapping and abuse um, of people around the world. One of the things we do is to highlight these abuses in the media. And in the last year alone, we've had about six or seven front page stories on, on the lead in British papers. I think there's only one lead in paper in Britain we haven't, we haven't had a front page on. Um, so we're really leading the, leading the way here in terms of explaining to people what is taking place across the world, um, in, you know, in, in countries, um, in places people do not know about. At the center of our work is our connection to the community, to the victims, to the, to the survivors and the people on the ground. And this is central to our success. We have a very strong connection with the Muslim community in the UK, so much so that people call us maybe from prisons across the world and say, 
Cage are the only people that can help me. They give us a statement and we try our best to try and you know, maybe find legal advice or something else, some other way we can help as well. I'll just illustrate to you the nature of what we're facing when it comes to the war on terror. And one of the cases that Cage has helped um, to really promote um, in the media and to generate awareness. I don't want to steal Yvonne's th thunder here, um, but we spoke earlier on and she mentioned the South African Bill of Rights. And one of the rights enshrined in that document is the right um, to not have your citizenship taken away. Now, a young man of Somali heritage in the UK, a British citizen, um, he was harassed um, by the security services in the UK. So much so that he decided to get up and leave the country because they were telling him, you have to work for us, otherwise we're going to make your life a misery. So he left and went to Somalia where he got married and you know, started a family and stuff. But when he, left, when he left for Somalia, the British government took away his citizenship. Now, the taking away of citizenship isn't necessarily you know, just the case that they take away your passport, you can't travel. This basically means that you have, you have no sort of international identity. Your rights, your international rights are basically taken away and you can be abused. I'll give you an example of this. Um, two, British, two Britons traveled to Somalia and had their citizenships taken away. They were later killed by American drone strikes. So this is actually quite a, you know, quite a grave thing that can happen to someone. This young man um, was then snatched from Somalia taken to Djibouti, and from there, he was then rendered, kidnapped by Americans, and taken to the States, where he is now waiting um, for trial. So we have, we have a global web of, ab of abuse taking place, and hopefully, inshallah, by us having a presence on the continent, we can uncover some more um, of these abuses and shine a light on them. I want to end just by talking a little bit about Muaz and Beg. I'm sure many of you know Muaz and Beg. One of, you know, one of the few um, former Guantanamo detainees to write about his experience. And we're very fortunate to have another one uh, with us today. Wazenbeg, um, as I said, is one of the most interrogated men in the world, but yet the British government had the audacity, the audacity to try and take him in and to try and accuse him of involvement in, you know, they say terrorism and all this sort of stuff. We have to understand that Wazenbeg was one of the few people on the face of the earth that was willing to speak out against the abuses, against the governments. He was fearless in his speaking out. And he would not, you know, he would not mince his words, as we say, in the UK. For this reason, this landed him in, in trouble. And so we await his trial next month. To give you an idea of the attempts by the British government to shut him up, they've told every newspaper in the UK that they cannot report on anything to do with Mwaz and Beg at the moment. So Mwaz and Beg was denied bail. Newspapers weren't even allowed to report that that, that, that that actually took place. They've tried so hard to shut him up. And so I, I make an appeal really to South Africans here that when that trial comes up, I encourage you to really come together in solidarity and with the cause of Mwaz and Beg. I saw him, you know, there were pickets, there were marches outside the embassy. We need to really, really gather, gather a storm so that the British government can see that this is someone with an important international message and someone who is important in South Africa, a country that has fought for justice, as well as in the UK, and that we will not take it as a community, them trying to silence us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amandla. While I'm also at that, just to, to share with you, normally at, at events like these, we say to switch your phones off. But I think tonight you can tweet about Cage Africa's launch. Hashtag Cage Africa. So, you know, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Twitter, please go for it. <laughs>